All right, guys, in this video, we are going to learn about optional route parameters. Here is the new requirement. In the department detail component, we need to add a back button. When we click on the back button, we should be navigated back to the department list component and the previously selected department must be highlighted. For example, if I click on Angular, I should be navigated to the department detail component. Over here, if I click on the back button, it should navigate me back to the department list component and Angular should be highlighted. Now this can be achieved using optional route parameters. Let's see how. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code and in the department detail component, let's first add the back button. Next, we need to listen to the click event on this button. Click and I'm going to assign a handler. Go to departments. And let's define this method. Go to departments. And over here, first I'm going to create a new variable, selected ID. So let selected ID. And assign the ID of the department that is currently in the view and that is the department ID. So this dot department ID. And we can also make a null check. So question mark this dot department ID else null. So the selected ID is equal to the current department ID. Now once we have this selected ID, we can navigate back to the department list view, but this time passing it as an optional parameter in the link parameters array. So this dot router dot navigate and then the link parameters array. The first argument is the path and this is going to be slash departments. And then the second argument is an object. The object has key value pairs. The key value pairs are nothing but the optional route parameters we want to send. So key is going to be ID and the value is going to be selected ID. Let's test it out. I'm going to go back to the browser, click on departments, go to angular. We now have the back button and when I click on the back button, you can see in the URL, we have a semicolon and then ID is equal to one. ID is the key, one is the value, which is what we have specified over here in the link parameters array. So this ID equals one is the optional route parameter. It is optional because its existence does not affect our view, but they can be used to apply some logic to the view, which is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to read this parameter compare with the ID in the list of departments and if the ID matches, we highlight the department. So let's go back to the department list component and read this parameter. First, we are going to import the activated route service and inject it. Next, in the ng-on-init method, we are going to retrieve the ID parameter using the param map observable. So we can copy paste the code from the department detail component, the ng on init method. I'm going to copy this, go back to department list component and paste it. And let's also make sure to import param map. Over here, instead of department ID, I'm going to change this to selected ID. And then I'm going to also declare that property public selected ID. All right. So now we have the selected ID of the department. Our next step is to compare it with the department ID to check if they match. So I'm going to create a new method is selected. This is going to have department as a parameter and we simply return department dot id equal 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 to this dot selected id so this method returns true 
if the department ID is equal to the selected ID. So let's make use of this method to bind a class to the selected department in the list. So in the li tag, I'm going to add class binding, class dot, and then the name of the class, this is going to be selected, is equal to, is selected, and then pass in the department. So if is selected returns true, apply the class selected to the li tag. And if you take a look at styles.css, in the selected class, we just change the background color and the font color. So now let's save this and test it out. And I've got the spelling wrong over here, is selected. All right, so if we go back to the browser, we have Angular highlighted. So let's start over. I'm in the department, uh, department list component. I'm gonna click on Angular. It takes me to the department detail component. And we have selected the department with ID is equal to one. If I click on back, you can see that Angular is highlighted. Similarly, if I click on node and then go back, you can see that node is highlighted. MongoDB, go back, MongoDB is highlighted. So that is how you pass optional route parameters and make use of it for your view logic. Also keep in mind that an optional route parameter does not need a placeholder while configuring the route. So in app routing module, like how we specified a placeholder for ID for the department detail component, we, we didn't have to specify ID as an optional route parameter for the department list component. So I can pass another parameter, for example, let's say test, and then the value is going to be test value. So if I save this, go back to the browser, I'm gonna click on departments, let's go to node, and I'm gonna go back, and you can see that we have two optional route parameters, ID is equal to two, and test is equal to test value a route will still work. All right, so that is about route parameters in Angular. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.